How are we going? I have no sound. Why is there no sound? There's sound. We can hear you. Okay. Better than yesterday? Yeah. Ish. Okay. Um, a little bit late today, though. I'm sorry. It's I fine. Writing up, I was writing Mr. Up Angel, we're going to give you a tardy now. Yes. I got your rubric done for your um, science project. Oh, cool. I sure I can't hear you, Mr. Hendro. Also, Mr. Sorry. Hendro, tomorrow I can't make it to class because my flight schedule changed from 11 a.m. to 7 a.m. Yeah, just saying. Okay. Um, for history, um, uh, I think almost everybody except one person said that, that nuclear threats were worse than communist threats. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I asked specifically to the South Koreans, how many of you would choose to go, okay, to mitigate the nuclear threat, I propose that all South Koreans accept communism. What the heck? Uh, so just join North Korea? If you think that the communist threat is not as bad as a nuclear threat, Accept the communism, and then you remove the nuclear threat. So, you, wait, wait, are you... No, no, then that's, that's kind of different. What you're saying is, shouldn't it be either accept communism or have a nuclear catastrophe? If you didn't have a problem with communism, there wouldn't be any conflict with communist countries, right? And if you allowed communism to spread, their form of government, if you had all that, then you mitigate the, the threat of nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. So, wouldn't that be a solution then? Uh, uh, what, if, what if communism isn't the only thing that causes nuclear threat? Ooh, curious. Yeah, what does, that's... So what does cause the nuclear threat then? Nuclears. How many of you watched the command and control video? Um, didn't we uh, like experience new uh, nuclear catastrophe before? Japan did. Um, yeah. Chernobyl has. Third Mile Island did. Did anybody watch the command and control video? No. Okay, is it the video you linked in Google Class? Is it? Yes. Is it? That's the one. The really long one. I didn't watch it. The really long one, yes. So I'm sorry, but if I look at a video more than three hours, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't dare to open the first five minutes. <laughs> I'm so then sorry. could I suggest that you watch the first half hour of Command and Control? You know what? I'll, I'll try. Just I'll for you, you. Actually, how about I give you the skinny on what's going on in Command and Control in the beginning of it. So the way Command and Control starts is it talks about the accident, uh, the Titan II missile catastrophe, or not, or almost disaster. So the problem, what happened was, it's not that, it's not that communist countries or dictatorship dictatorships having nuclear weapons is a problem. It's that anybody having nuclear weapons is a problem. The people that do the refueling of these nuclear weapons are teenagers. Let me repeat that again. The people that were doing the nuclear, the, the refueling of these nuclear weapons, these nuclear missiles were teenagers. Not just teenagers, but teenagers that went, that work 16 hour shifts. Like Oof. us teenagers? Like Daniel. They don't work 16 hours on ships, Dylan. No, shifts, 16 hour shifts. Oh, so okay. you, they work for 16 hours and then they might be, or it's, it's not a phenomenal amount of time that they work. And they're asked to be, if I, to be able to service thousands of nuclear weapons, 
is costly if you have to pay experts. So, because it costs too much to pay experts, they give the job to minimum wage teenagers to refuel nuclear weapons. Now, the teenagers are wearing these, you know, safety gear because the fuel that they carry is caustic. It can, it, it'll burn through your skin and all that. It's, da it's dangerous stuff. But when they get to the, they, they have to go down through these, these systems and they go underground, they walk across a gangplank. It takes them like half an hour to get to the missile from their trucks. And if they don't bring the right equipment, which, I mean, how many, how many of you have forgotten to do something correctly? So anyway, this one guy decides, okay, I'm just going to push my socket into the, into the refueling nozzle and hold it there with a wrench so that, I can, so that I can refuel instead of going back all the way up to the car to get a torque wrench. The connector nut falls down the bottom, goes dunk. And because these are also made cheaply, they need to be, they're, it's rocket science, it has to be thin wool. So it's like an aluminium can. It, the pressure out was really high, but it's a thin wall, like millimeters thin. So this nut that falls down hits the side of the rocket and out starts pouring all the fuel inside an enclosed tube, four stories high. And what does the teenager do? He goes, oh crap, and runs. They can't fix it. If they'd said, all right, the fuel is building up in there, we'll open the top doors immediately and let all the fuel come out, you might have saved the problem. But this guy just ran and didn't tell anybody until the whole room was filled with the, um, the fumes. And if they started activating things to open, it would have caused a spark to make the whole thing go boom. Did it go boom? It did go boom. Wow. It went big boom, but it didn't go nuclear boom. Is that a good boom? Well, what happened was after they found the warhead that had been shot out because of the explosion inside the tube, all the circuitry had melted. But if one of those things had melted going in the opposite direction to the way, like if it had made a circuit, you would have triggered a nuclear detonation. It's just by chance that it didn't. How long before that happens again? The, I, the thing about command and control, that movie, that documentary, is not that nuclear weapons are dangerous in the wrong hands. They're dangerous in anyone's hands. It's like juggling chainsaws. I mean, you might say that's impressive if someone does it once, juggling chainsaws on a talent show. And you expect them to be able to do it for that one performance. But if you expect someone to do it for 50 years, nonstop, without making a mistake, whoo, it's kind of unlikely. How many of you think that a 50-year-old a car is going to perform well? Maybe, maybe if you had 10 of those cars, you could expect 10 of those cars to perform well. But there are thousands of these nuclear weapons that are more complicated than a car. That's basically the essence of command and control. So when you argue, when you argue and you say nuclear weapons are more dangerous, I agree. But it's not necessarily the, the way you argue is, is not necessarily correct. Because if you say that nuclear weapons are more dangerous than communism, you need to explain how they are more dangerous than communism. And by the way, for those people who say communism is a greater threat, I agree with you there as well. Everybody's going to die. What matters is the way we live now, right? I mean, um, doesn't nuclear hurt more? So we're going to die either way. So. Yeah, but if you talk about suffering, there is very little long-term suffering if you destroy the entire world within an afternoon. What if, you're, what if it just ends life on Earth and it's, you know, the end of day sort of thing? 
there would be a lot more panicking then, right? But wouldn't it be better than social uh, than communism? I mean, I'd rather like get I mean starve to death than like explode. Really? I think the yeah. problem is if it does end modern civilization, because then we have to deal with it, and that's going to be worse than communism. So the it's going to be worse if we survive. Um, I mean, yeah. why if? Well, if we don't survive communism and we don't survive nuclear holocaust, then one's slower than the other. Wait, do you think that communism is a greater threat? I'm saying it's arguably a greater threat. Okay. I mean, Stranger, what's your opinion on this? If you're, if the danger of becoming communi communist is not greater than nuclear prolifera proliferation, I would suggest that the U.S. disarms. And you just allow North Korea to bully its way into South Korea. That would be a, that would be a logical conclusion to that. And I don't think I would want that because mm -hmm. it's not worth losing the current way of life that you have now. Mm -hmm. However, if you believe that it's better off to maintain the current way of life that you have now with your values and traditions and all those sorts of things, then I would suggest that you maintain a nuclear arsenal to prevent communist takeovers of countries like South Korea. What would stop North Korea from restarting the Korean War if every other country on Earth had no nuclear weapons, no nuclear proliferation, and there was no nuclear threat at all? What if there was some sort of way to disable every single nuke in the world? What is there to stop North Korea from invading South Korea. You're saying the one thing that stops them is nuclear? North Korea is within artillery range of Seoul, the capital of South Korea. So South Korea sits there and on its just a little bit to the north of it, there is artillery batteries ready to launch missiles, um, shells, maybe some nuclear arsenal directly into Seoul or and Incheon and all those sort of places. Why don't they do that? My suspicion is that there would be a massive retaliation, or they would think that there would be a massive retaliation from the US. They don't want to get nuked, so they're not going to nuke anyone else. So in that sense, having nuclear weapons is a prevention of communism going into South Korea. Okay. Any thoughts? It's crazy. It's very crazy. I'm just messed up. It's not an easy answer. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. I'm not going to say that you, your answer is wrong, but just consider that there is another point of view where communism is a, a fate worse than death. Wait, um, if, if, if we become a communist, what's the worst that could happen? Look at North Korea. What no, seriously, let's, let's have a look at North Korea. It, it, it's, it truly is a, something that is horrible. So I'm going to just look up North Korea satellite image. Okay. There you go. There's an image for you. There you go. Can I see that? Wait, I don't want to do that. I want to open a new tab. There we go. Can you see where North Korea is on this picture, Dylan? I didn't take geography. I don't know. So this is South Korea, the and, this is, and this is China. 
between China and South Korea, there is no light. This is North Korea. Oh. Just think about Hugo, that for a second. Why would countries want to become communist? Very, very good question. Why on earth would you want to go communist if you've got something like this happening? I mean, is that bad in a way? They're using less electricity, right? <laughs> it means that citizens won't have. Dylan, do you know what North Korea even is? I mean, I I've heard bad stories about it, but I don't know. Yeah. Deep so you have you have people starving in that country because there's not enough food. There's not enough healthcare. There's not enough. I, I thought food. everybody's uh um thing is the same. What do you mean? Everybody's possessions is everybody's, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's possessions is, is the same, except the people in charge. So you have everybody living in this sort of area with no electricity, no running water, not enough food, except for like a few people over here in Pyongyang who have their own personal, you know, luxury car collections. Who all well, basically everyone equally has nothing yeah it's the equal sharing of misery yeah but communism is only a threat if it spreads. so why would that's how up. would it spread ideas that's i mean only, the so idea has been around for like a century yeah so. and the thing that stops the spread of an idea is a as a counter argument like the picture that you're looking at here is an argument against communism. It, okay. doesn't, it, it causes a huge amount of suffering. I know, but right now it's like not really spreading, I don't think. No, because most countries have gone, yeah, it doesn't work. So if you look at China over here, they were much more communist in the 30s, 40s, 50s even up to the 70s. But nowadays, they have some of the largest manufacturing in the world. And the reason why they have some of the largest manufacturing in the world, and by that, I mean 16% of the global economy goes through China. Yeah, so one of the reasons, one of the reasons for that is because they've gone less communist and more capitalist. Okay, so wouldn't most countries recognize that it's not really a functional system and not want to implement it? Okay, so Russia and China, uh, Russia and America were the two superpowers during the Cold War. But if you compare their, their gross domestic product, they just weren't producing anything. America produced tons of stuff just after World War II. They could, there was wealth, there was prosperity, but not in Russia. Russia had a very poor economic system and it, it, it showed in the day-to-day -day lives of people you could not get the food that you needed. Um, so if you are, if you, if everybody is considered equal and you don't get paid for performance, then performance doesn't happen. I'll give you, a, I'll give you an idea. If I was to turn this class into a communist class, I would give everybody the same grade. I take all your grades. I put them all together and I give everybody the same grade. What is your grade at the moment now? Also? Um, is it in the A region? Yeah. Okay. So let's say that there's a couple of people <laughs> getting A's, a couple of people getting B's, a couple of people getting C's, and a couple of people getting D's and F's. And I just say, okay, we're just going to average the entire grade. The average grade for this class at the moment, I think, is about a B. So I'll get rid of all the A's in the class and give everybody a B. Who's happy with everybody getting a B? Uh, some people and some people no. Some people, yes, some people no. So, Wait, for the so, North so, Korea? So, so just a second. Elsa, are you happy with this situation of going from an A to a B? Not really. Welcome to capitalism, sister. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that it sucks. So why would people want to implement it if it's... Because, because of the discontent where those people that are getting the A's are not only getting the good grades and the good stuff, they are also the ones that dictate the amount of money that where the money goes. 
it's kind of weird. So there are some there are some people in the world today that have more money than some countries. I would be willing to bet that Bill Gates has and Warren Buffett have more money than ten countries. Ten like if you look at the ten poorest countries in the world, that Bill Gates and Warren Buffett would have more money than those ten countries. Maybe even those ten countries combined. Whoa. Okay. So when people from poorer countries go, these guys are rich. Why on earth are they rich? They should share their wealth. It's this discontentment. Well, didn't he go through hard stuff to get that richness? You know, he went through a monopoly system. So, you know, Windows, there are no other platforms that really do this sort of stuff. You have... So to make sure that nobody else does web browsers for a while, uh, Microsoft had a um, had a monopoly system where they said our Microsoft Windows will only really work well with Internet Explorer. I mean, they there was a lawsuit, and now you most people use things like Google Chrome, Firefox, that sort of stuff. But for a while, for a short period, they were monopolizing, saying, "Okay, because I can make Windows, and everybody's using Windows." I am now going to limit it so that Windows only will work well with certain programs. Does that sound fair? Now, why would they do that? So they can make more money. If you make the money, you make the rules. Now, there are problems there, but let's go with the problems in a Soviet country that's even worse. There was stories of um, uh, electric motor factories. So the electric motor factories, they had a set number of targets. Like the, they said to the people, okay, you are supposed to make 80 tons of motors every month. And the guys are going, 80 tons of motors? But that means we'd need to make like 800 motors. Those 800 motors are going to be, you know, it's going to cost a lot. It's going to, it's going to, take, it's going to take so much time. I'll have to work really hard to do it. And then somebody gets a bright idea. What if we make motors that are one ton each? <gasps> that means we only have to make 80 motors. So they did. Soviet um, production was of these really, really cost ineffective products that met quotas, but didn't actually, weren't actually viable in the market. If you had a 100 kilowatt motor that weighed one ton or weighed 100 kilograms, which one do you buy? I don't know. You buy the 100 kilogram one because you can actually fit that on a truck. You can okay. move it around and you can put it, you can bolt it in nice places. A one ton motor is really difficult to use. But if you only have to make 80 of them a month rather than 800 a month, which one do you prefer? Would you prefer to to make 80 or would you to isn't make it 80? like loss income for them so you don't want to do that yeah but your income is fixed in a communist system whether you perform at a at a d grade level or you perform oh. at an a grade level there is oh. no incentive to work harder because you still get paid the same in fact if you if one of my biggest criticisms of america is that they are not they are not capitalist Oh, can you leave North Korea? Not really. Um, you're there, you're there. So just think about the problems with communism here. If you have a company that is not doing well and they're not performing well, should they, should they fail? Like if you have somebody that's not doing their grade work well, should they fail? If, they haven't, if, you, have, if you haven't put any work into the entire year, for example, should you get an A? No. Okay. Oh. So what's happening in America right now? You have companies like uh, the, these, like Goldman Sachs, that should be failing, but they are being given money to be able to keep functioning. This is what this $2 trillion bailout by the Trump administration is doing right now. They are, they are promoting a thing that I like to call socialism or cap communism for the rich. That means the rich get paid when there's a, an emergency not the poor. So 
this socialism or communism for the rich is actually something that I find very at odds with a pure capitalist libertarian government it, or society, I should say. Those Mr. rich companies that take those risks and fail when they take those risks should be allowed to die. Mr. Hendro? Yes, Jonathan. Didn't like everyone get paid a thousand two hundred recently in America? Yes. Isn't that? Uh, never mind. Yes, it's a very socialist way to go. Yeah. Wait, the kids get paid thousand two hundred? Yeah, they did. Is, no, 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 no. Anybody who's of voting age. Oh, really? I thought it was voting. Oh. I yes. thought it's any person because no, no, because they said it was too. It would take too too much time to sort everything out. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Wow. I know that there was supposed to be the um, freedom dividend or universal basic income concept that Andrew Yang came up with, which a lot of people were saying was hyper socialist, hyper communist. Um, the trouble, the trouble that I see is not, is not about paying people that amount because that's pittance. If you have $2 trillion and you're only paying out 300 million people, it shouldn't, it shouldn't do that much damage to your economy. Uh -huh. What's happening worse is that you are, is that they are paying out certain people groups. What? No, they paid everyone, right? Even as no, long as you pay taxes. Businesses are getting bailouts. Big businesses are getting bailouts. If you compare the Dow Jones index to the, um, the Russell index, there is a big discrepancy. There's a lot of difference. The medium businesses are getting a lot more um, problems. Okay. Mr. Hanjo? Yep. Um, doesn't the people in North Korea complain about it? <laughs> Koreans, would you like to answer that question? I mean, why can't they just start their own revolution? Just like Dylan, they'll all be shot to death. What do you mean? I mean, if there's no if there's no more people, then there's no more. Oh my! Bro. Right, right. There's no if there's no more people. I don't get that. I'm like, why though? Okay, so have you ever? You, we, you weren't here for our medieval stuff, were you? Nope. Okay. So you're go, so before you have things like the French Revolution. Actually, no, we were this year. The French Revolution is where you go from kings to yeah. oh, well, French Revolution. Yeah. But yeah. so why do peasants work for the king? Because they're poor. <laughs> Not because they're poor. They are forced to work. Because if someone else is rich? Die. So if, if I'm in charge of my peasants and they say we won't work, I'll say, well, guess what? I have a suit of armor and a big sword. What are you going to do about it? Oh, well. Does not other country try to help then? Yeah, but it's I mean, yeah. difficult since you cannot really go in there because they have nuclear weapons. Yeah, so they can just... Or we will nuclear North South Korea. Uh, okay, I'm not going to bother doing that. It's, it's, it's too much of a risk. However, if you have something like a, if you say, we want to rebel, we want to rebel, we want better work, we want more, more facilities and all that, and all they say is, well, we have 100 tanks. I don't care if you have like 10,000 people in a riot. You send 100 tanks in, those 10,000 people quickly go towards zero people. Oh, uh, that sucks. It is very sad. Yeah, that's... that's. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's even more horrible when you have some family members that are in North Korea and some family members that are in South Korea. How did the family get separated? Oh my God. They just gave the... Daniel? Yeah. Daniel Young. Dylan. Yeah. Please. Stop asking these questions and watch the documentary on the Korean War. Or even better, watch MASH. 
<laughs> okay, so. You know, this is the point where 50% of our class is gone again. <laughs> All right. This is awesome. No, it's uh, not, Dylan. Okay. Um, I'm going to also do a catch-up science Zoom later on this afternoon. Are we done? Yep. We're done. Wait, yeah. so, wait, is science really mandatory? I didn't listen to anything you guys wait, said, so, cause sci Wait, science, aren't we, like, uh, are you going to talk about the assignment only? Is that um, it? There is. No, no, no. I'm going to go through the background for the assignment. Aren't you going to talk about the, the Van de Graaff, like, slowing it or something? No, we're going to be yes, sir, We're going to be looking at conventions. So there are yes, sir, a number of conventions, and then we're going to look at potential energy. Mr. Andro? Yep. What are we doing for science tomorrow? Because I can't be there. Um, okay, so on Monday, I hope to be doing the Van de Graaff experiment. If not, I will be doing a video of the Van de Graaff experiment. Uh -huh. So I, what I want to have before that is your analysis. We're and doing I'll another lab? Your, your, um, your background theory. Uh, Come this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Oh, I have a question. What is it, Yorin? Um, so, can I research about whether communism is like as great of a threat as nuclear war, and like, can I use that as an argument? What sort of research do you mean? Like, how big of a threat is communism today? Ah, okay, that's a different question now. Today is a different question. Because I think that's what also is trying to say. Like, like today, they're trying, of course, not like to stop communism. So like, and for nuclear wars, it's, I'm guessing it's like more, um, like we're more close to having a nuclear war than having communism. Mm. You're probably more likely to have a nuclear war between a country like India and Pakistan. Yeah, because in the question, you said that you could do back then or now. Yep. So I thought now was more relevant. Okay. 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 Thank you, Mr. Hendro. Thank you, Mr. Hendro. Say right. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Terima kasih banyak, boss. Thank you. Thank you.